I think even in doing this podcast for over a year yeah. now, I think we've realized, wow, it always comes back to these five areas, at least. Not yeah. five, but five areas that we, we get the most questions about, we talk about the most, yep. and uh, matter the most. I agree. Right? I agree. Okay. Yeah. So the five areas or fundamentals, we're going to call them, are physical, uh, mental, nutrition, medical, and support. And by support, we mean kind of family and friends, the people around you. Your so, group, yep, your yep, posse. Your posse. We're going to talk about three different phases, we'll call them. Um, the first one would be diagnosis to treatment starting. So uh, the scariest time, mm -hmm. <laughs> really the scary time. The, the initial, oh shit, what has happened, mm -hmm. period. Um, and then we'll, we'll take those five fundamentals and we'll talk about them during that period of time. And then we're going to transition into treatment. So when you are actually doing treatment, we, we know that that looks different for different people, but still these five fundamentals apply. And for the most part, we're going to be covering three areas of treatment that affect people both physically and mentally the most, and that is chemo, radiation, and surgeries. So, yeah. I mean, it's just that there are many, many other treatments. Um, it's just we get the most questions, and Heather has a lot of experience with these. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're going to really focus on when we get to the treatment phase. Yep. And then the other time that I feel like is really scary, we're going to talk about post-treatment. Mm -hmm. So kind of when you're... You know, maybe you've done one of these things, surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, and they're kind of saying, okay, we're going to continue on some sort of medication, but you're basically, hey, good, <laughs> we'll see you in three months or six months or whatever. And mm -hmm. that, whoo, that can be super scary as well. We just really want to be able to help you uh, get through these phases, and we want you to be able to find the information you're looking for, which was really the crux of starting this whole podcast in the mm -hmm. beginning anyway, was, you know, when I was first diagnosed, there was nothing that you could find from somebody who has lived with metastatic breast cancer for as long as I have. So we're starting out and talking about the mental side of things in that period of time from you just got diagnosed to when treatment starts. The whole world keeps going on and, and yours just stopped. Stopped. I mean, slammed on the brakes, hit the wall, stopped. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're dealing with so much anxiety and fear and all of those things. But but you can kind of start from a spot of, okay, what can I control, right? And, and how can I then work with the mental aspect of this, right? Mm -hmm. Your brain is so powerful, right? Yeah. You have to, you have the ability to use it for good. We are wired to think about the what ifs but you know we we have to look out for what could hurt us right mm -hmm. so there therefore when we get told hey this could hurt you <laughs> like that's what we're going to focus on yeah but it doesn't mean that you can't have some control over that and i think that's what i learned was learning both through some of the input that i got from the people who i felt best around you know from you from my brother from Christy, my mom, all of these people who were literally like, not saying, you know, hey, everything's going to be fine, but saying... They weren't saying, you're not going to die. No. You weren't, you weren't saying that. No. no. But, we were, but we're willing to walk through, like, me saying, I'm worried about this, and there being, uh, okay, but Think there's, about this. there's an alternative mm -hmm. or whatever. So it's really about taking it's almost like a breakdown of all of those thoughts and this is where i do think like journaling could be helpful too but like really thinking about oh my gosh i just thought this i, I just thought i'm not going to see sydney grow up you know and then i thought okay how do i change that you know like mm -hmm. and it literally is just taking those thoughts and going no that's not a for sure that's nothing we don't know anything for sure you know, this isn't serving me. Um, my goal, I set a goal, which I, some, I started to think about what were my goals in this new world, you know, instead of givens. I think when we live in life before that, we, we kind of walk through this world as if things are going to happen on our, and they're going to be givens. 
Um, but like, what were my goals? And then it was like, okay. And it seemed super lofty. I'm going to see her go to kindergarten, mm -hmm. you know? And then it was like work back from, from there. How do I do that? Well, I think about, again, every day, it's not serving me to think about, you know, I'm going to die or it's not, um, helpful to think about a pain in my back. How can I think about a pain in my back differently? Right? So, um, I just would really build from anything I had. So I decided that, you know, a pain in my back could be from a workout. I did, mm -hmm. you know, it could be the opposite of instead of, you know, that initial it's cancer, which is, you know, what we talked about in the diagnosis episode, it was like literally taking that to be, if I don't know it to be true, then it, it doesn't, it's not necessarily true. And I can, I can control this a different way. I can think about it differently. These things that are being talked about and that you're going to start doing are big and scary. A lot of times uh, we don't have a lot of um, experience with things like this. Uh, some people have never even really even been to the doctors, prior, sure. you know, so, yeah. so just figuring out um, how to wrap your head around kind of what is going to be your life for a while it is really a challenge. But I, I think it's a really important challenge to take on, right? Sure. And we, and you know, for the last week or two or three, you've had a very high anxiety level yep. of, yep. of getting diagnosed and finding yep. out and doing yep. running more tests and maybe finding out you're metastatic. Yep. And um, now it's time for treatment. Believe it or not, um, this can be somewhat of a relief. It is a relief yeah. because you, one, you feel like you're doing something, like mm -hmm. something is actually happening. You, you know, you've kind of gotten through finding out that you have cancer and then just like the initial, get it out, get it out, get it out mm -hmm. or whatever, do something. So now you are doing something and you can think of that in a positive way, right? We are For doing sure. something to kill the cancer. And I think that's the, the number one thing about today and what Heather did. Was instead of just accepting and okay, cure me. Yeah. Um. It was the mental aspect of okay, now we yeah. get to kill cancer. Yeah. Um. It's not just pre prepping this and eating right and getting my food and doing all those things are really important. But now it's we're actually killing that thing is the reason for why I'm doing this. Yeah. 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 So having a plan feels better. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of the. Anxiety is that, right? Fear sure. out of control of all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. So having a plan feels so much better. Um, but now that you have this plan, it's time to buy in. Like you have to buy in to the plan. And by buy in, I just mean there's going to be, let's say we're talking about chemo. People think of chemo as terrible. And I get it. There are side effects to chemo that are difficult. But... Like, I just didn't think that it was going to be helpful at all for me to be doing chemo and thinking of it as poison, right? No. Or thinking of it as destructive and all of these things, except, I mean, I wanted it to be destructive to the cancer specifically. Yeah. So the brain is really powerful. Obviously, the placebo effect is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And so your choice in whether we're dealing with starting a chemo treatment or two weeks into a chemo treatment or having surgery and radiation and getting mm -hmm. the side effects of radiation, which can be numerous depending on where they're radiating and the level of their radiating. Yeah. But in all of these, there's some sort of consequence of it, a side effect, um, mm -hmm. an unintended consequence. That's what a side effect is. Um, with that, first of all, they're all going to suck, <laughs> right? Yeah, none, of mean, the, none of them I mean, are, are what you wished for. That's why they're called side effects, yes. right? Okay. So, but, you know, what you did, and it was tough sometimes, but what you really did was you really put this in your mind, and I kind of witnessed you doing it, and at the time, um, you were like, yeah, this is terrible, I didn't want this, whatever it is, but I am killing cancer. And yeah. because of this, the cancer is dying. Yes, I have to now deal with this, but the cancer is dying. And I'm still going to be here because I can deal with this side effect. I can have this. I, I can learn to live with this. Mm -hmm. But I can't learn to live with something if I'm not alive. 
Yeah. And, and your mental attitude towards that was, I am killing cancer. Yeah. And there's something to that. What can you do physically? That's what we're going to talk about today. That's how I approached everything, right? was just like, how can I give my body the best chance for, yeah. you know, medicine to work? For me to be as strong as possible okay so from the physical side of things keep in mind that like moving your body also just helps your brain right it just helps you feel better about things and not not just your brain but your whole aspect you know getting outside even you know i would challenge you to get outside um on most days and you know unless it's raining sideways like it has been <laughs> or or it's really cold and terribly yucky. I mean, um, it's it's just so good for us to get outside and to move your body. Even, you know, at this point, we're talking about pre-treatment. Yes. Um, you likely feel pretty good. Yes. Now, I know your brain's going, oh, you have this yes, disease. Body, you should feel yeah, bad yeah, now. Yes. But you don't. But again, that's almost like a way to train your brain to go, no, wait a second. It doesn't matter what they're telling. Like, listen to how your body feels, right? Like again using that those cues that you're getting so if you're starting from a lifestyle that's you know really inactive yeah you know it, it really is get steps in stand up while you're watching tv move around the house go up and down the stairs a few times you know go out to the mailbox all of those things those all add up if you're already exercising keep exercising you know keep going cancer's not a reason to stop right. as a matter right. of fact it's a reason to, to keep going go. yeah so I, was, um, I also was thinking about like, just ask somebody to do some things with you. You know, I think a lot of times, um, again, I, I go to like walking, but it could be biking, could be things that you're doing together. It's kind of like driving in a car where you don't have to look at the person. You can, you can maybe movement helps you kind of process some things. It's a good time. Um, activity sometimes is a good time to help you sort out your brain. Let's go on. Next thing, lift heavy things, right? So weight, gaining muscle mass is super important. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, again- Cancer hates it. Well, and I was just, at, as we age, right? The, the stronger we are, the better off we are, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I love when you say something like cancer hates it, I'm like, oh, what can I do that cancer hates? Yes. Like this is all, that's, that is literally how Same I feel about physical activity in now, general. The truth is cancer doesn't hate it, but what cancer hates is a strong immune system. When you put oxygenated blood circulating through your body at a rapid rate, mm -hmm. that is great for immune system, poor for rapidly dividing cells sitting in a spot. Yep. That, that's a truth. There's no there's yep. no question about that. So do that. Yeah, I think the post-treatment is kind of everything that happens when you're on a treatment, a medication that is allows you to kind of engage in life, right? Mm -hmm. When you're not... Um, so feeling the effects of something that's mm -hmm. just kind of this post treatment. So that's the thing. I think we, we live in this world of all oh, I used to, or I did. No, you don't, you can be really physically fit without killing yourself, you know? No doubt. So, but um, pushing yourself is a positive thing and you giving yourself permission to get that heart rate up, to mm -hmm. get that breathing up you know, for extended periods of time and and pushing yourself is okay, just not to a level where you're going to injure yourself. And that is the key. That's where professionals come in. Yeah, it was really helpful for me. It made me help. I don't know. It made me put my life together a little bit. I joined a gym as yeah. soon as I was done with radiation. And I worked with somebody to kind of set up a, a the strengthening program and it just it added a lot of um structure to my days it made me feel like i was kind of knocking things out help with the mental aspect of you know okay i'm not in treatment the same way but all of those things were really you know mm -hmm. helpful to me uh, we're going to be talking about nutrition today and yes. what things you can do and yes can do hey what things you can i almost said can't do but you can yeah so right. let's start by just saying that I people are going to come out of from everywhere and offer you nutritional advice. Your brother's sister's grandma's aunt is going to say, "I know what you should eat." <laughs> yeah. I think it's best just to start simple. 
And this is such an overwhelming time. When we're talking about healthy food, I think it's so much in our nature to say, I'm going to eliminate this, that, this, that, and the other thing, which is, I'm sure some of that needs to be eliminated. But I think it's a lot better to consider how do I add in some of the foods that I know are good for me? Fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables in particular, right? When we look at, you know, what they used to tell us, five servings a day or whatever, a lot of Americans don't come close to five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, but just instead of thinking about, I'm going to eliminate all of these things, think about adding in fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And even easier, add in the ones you like. Let's start there. <laughs> you don't have to go start with kale. I don't like kale. I'm not sorry. I don't like kale. You know. Yeah, goes our kale sponsorship. I know we were so close on that too. Um, but it, I just think sometimes we set these bars or expectations, and it's like, wait a second. Let's just kind of climb the ladder instead of trying to jump up to the top of this. I mean, as an occupational therapist, I literally in co took classes learning how to set goals, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we always keep in mind kind of that big long-term goal, but as therapists, we set short-term goals to get us there, mm -hmm. right? So what are the what are the pieces along the way? You know, and everybody feels better with having some success versus, versus failing miserably, you know, and just cashing it in or saying, never mind. I tried that. For sure. So, um, find some fruits and vegetables that you like, add them in, right? Right. I and think, this is something you can do. Yes. Just like the physical, you yep. can get up and walk. This is something you can yep. do for a reason which yep. affects the brain. Well, I mean, again, the plan that's right for you is the plan that's right for you, which goes back to what we've been talking about in following your intuition. Yep. But I will say, I feel like a lot of times there's a lot of encouragement to just do things later. And I'm telling you, you don't need to wait until later to, to impact these things after treatment, after all these things. Start now because not only can it have an effect on your body, it can have a huge effect on your mind. I so agree with that. You don't, know? Don't, if people are telling you to wait, I... You know, and I, I mean, I don't know. I, I had somebody tell me a calorie was a calorie at some point in treatment. And, and there know, are days that a calorie is a calorie <laughs> and they are right. But that's, we're yeah. going to get into that in a few Maybe weeks. Later. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's different than yeah. right now. Right now, remember, you're fairly healthy. Yeah. And if you're, you know, a rookie at like nutrition in general, it can be very simple. Find real, eat real food. Real food means things that go bad, right? Things that will, um, that, you know, be able to read the ingredients on something, you know, kind of that five ingredients or less type of principle. You know, we get boxes of, uh, you know, of whatever that have just this list of ingredients that you go, whew, that's a lot. Right. So as just, close as it looks to it, when it came yeah. off the, off a vine or out of the ground, as close yeah. to it that is possible, it's yeah. going to be healthier for you. Yeah, and even go back processing. Right. Even you know, I mean, I would you know, like butter is a pretty real food, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that sometimes are on this. Oh, that's not good for me list. That I'd be like, well, I'm not saying it's not. You know, it's fine. Whatever. So, um. I think it's easier, this is just my opinion, is to kind of find what works for you and eat it. Like, and you can build your repertoire over time or whatever, but keep it simple. So, um, you know, we're talking about medical today, but one of the things we do understand and doing all of these, it was, it's a little bit difficult because every situation is different. Is. And when we're talking about diagnosis to treatment, we understand that can be two days. That can be a week, that can be three weeks, that can be a month. That's different for everybody in everybody's different yeah. situation and where they are in life and what their goals are with this, what uh, uh, travel, uh, what situations are available to you and what yes. are not. There's just so many variables out there. There's no way we can hit on all of those. But, you know, we, I mean, I guess mostly it's, it's taking Heather's experience 
while going through it, but also being in it for, you know, 25 years now of, of going through that. So, medical, what are we thinking? Well, I, initially, my first thought is this is literally just survival, right? Yeah. Like, this is just trying to think, you know, encompass, like, what is happening here but also like trying to stay calm and keep some things moving and um and it is also kind of an opportunity to think about how like to set the tone in terms of how you want to interact with the medical professionals and that you're going to encounter but also just what your expectations are i guess from all of that so I feel like this is compared to what we've talked about with nutrition and fitness and mental. I feel like this is probably the least in your hands to some extent. I get that you get to make decisions and, and, and all that, but yeah. we don't we can Google some nutrition information or some fitness information. Mm-hmm. You can also Google medical stuff, but you didn't go to med school. You didn't spend all of those years deciding what's best for your DNA. And, and you, oh, you're no, making, for sure. You know sure. what I mean? So, no, I think it's it's more about, you know, finding the people that you feel comfortable with. Exactly. Um, finding the way that you feel most comfortable going through this testing. Trust. Yeah. Procedures, <laughs> like trusting exactly how you want to access your medical information all of that is mm-hmm. kind of in here way more than yeah so can you tell us a little bit you know when when you were first diagnosis and, and not the whole story but just for the people who haven't heard before kind of the the bad to good that you experienced yeah so i mean you know this it started initially with my primary care doctor who had helped deliver my daughter sydney um so it started there and that was all fine like she she knew there was a problem. She sent me out to get some tests done. She didn't leave me in a lurch. That was, that was all fine. What became a problem was that I ended up at an oncology, at an appointment with an oncologist. Um, about a week later, I'd already met with a, a surgeon who had kind of quoted all the statistics to me. And I, I mean, in retrospect, I wish I could have stopped him because I couldn't get those stats out of my head you know, thinking about him saying, yeah, I'm not, whatever, that they, you know, it wasn't great to be stage four, of course. Um, But then, so this oncologist, everything about the whole encounter was just really terrible. His bedside manner was terrible. He was angry at me and my doctor because he was the one who was actually telling me that I did have stage four breast cancer. Um, he told me to get my affairs in order and that we could try some chemo when he got back from skiing, but he wasn't making any promises. So, and we don't know, maybe this guy's great and just had the worst day of his life and the just, the, you sure. know, we've all had terrible days and that uh, just because you're an oncologist, you don't, you're not immune to that. But um, when we talk about the trust and talk about do you feel comfortable with and do you feel like you're a player in this? Mm -hmm. Clearly that was not the case and that was realized right away. Right away. I mean, I, I did try to interact with him a little bit. He did say, Oh, they are doing some research at some hospital, you know, some places, but basically it was like, I don't even know if you want to try chemo. Like, you know, you don't. So, so here's the next part. And this was my experience in going through this, and it was yours too until a couple of days later. Um, we thought that was the norm to some extent. Yeah. When you're in it yeah. and you have no other experience, yeah. it's kind of like, you know, if somebody grows up and lives in poverty their whole life and that's all they ever see, that is their norm. Mm-hmm. It's not poverty to them. This was similar to us, and, and yes, it sucked, and he was giving us information, but we didn't know that was almost malpractice until a couple of days later yeah it just was so i mean that was kind of the oh my gosh i guess i got the worst of this cancer like exactly oh i have no options oh right. i i'm all of a sudden this person who is supposed to just go home and enjoy the time i have left like yeah it, it was so and we didn't know any better we didn't know any better because so. that was you know i mean my experience with cancer our experience with cancer was very very limited mm-hmm. right um but also we, it, it, it just, it feels, it, we, I've talked about this a little bit, how 
unbelievable it feels because I felt fine. <laughs> like, so to be healthy, to have this happen to you, um, and then to have, you know. So then what happened? Well, he, I mean, I will just say he. Forget him. Well, just quickly, he, he did, I mean, loaded me up with a whole bunch of pamphlets, his nurse did, and said, do you want to, you know, like, do you want to make an appointment for chemo? And I was like, I'm out of here. All right. <laughs> so let, let's just say, this guy was a douche. And he, 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 let's just be honest, he was not good at his job. I don't care if he was having a bad day. Okay. Then we went home. So we're not talking about mm -hmm. douche dude. We're <laughs> on to the good news. And so then, you know, the next day, um, I got a phone call from a different oncologist who I was very fortunate that my brother had been to med school at this at the University of Michigan, was able to kind of drop everything, make a lot of phone calls and find her. But it the tone changed immediately when she called me. I remember thinking like the first I don't know how many minutes, but at least the first 10 questions had nothing to do with cancer. And I thought, what? Who is this person who is asking me about my life and about kind of my family, what I did, kind of just trying to, I don't know, get to know me, figure out, you know, where I was at with things. Um, but then she also, she said just everything right. She said that cancer didn't scare her, that she saw how it worked. You know, she said that um, she believed, you know, one, that we could get started. <laughs> this was Friday, that we could get started on Monday. You know, she gave me her phone number for the weekend. And again, this is 1998, so things were not as, couldn't just. She still does it today, by the way. Yeah, she does. We talked about that. Um, everything was different with her. It was like, okay, if you are, you know, want to do something about this cancer, I'm going to help you. Like, we're going to kill cancer together. Yeah. You know, and also, uh, here's something to do for the weekend. Go get some green tea and eat some fruits and vegetables, and we'll start killing cancer on Monday. Like, and that quote was 20... How many years ago? It'll be 25 in December. So when that happened, that was 25 years ago. And when we go back to the mental side of things, that is stuck with Heather every day since then. Yeah, and that honestly, been with you. on days that I wobble or that, you know, or I used, I think that used to happen more than it does now, but I still go back to that. Yeah. This is where I can root myself. I can root myself in... What am I eating? What am I thinking about? You know, like I've just been able to expand on that. Mm -hmm. But get some green tea, eat some fruits and vegetables. <laughs> I think what I've learned over time, too, because when, when you get into the world of cancer, right, like you, it's every three weeks and every this, and it seems like everything has to be exactly on time, right? Mm -hmm. And I know there's some importance to that, but as you get farther out, it's not as imperative, that everything go exactly, you know, to the day or whatever. So you, I think what well, we... Well, does, does part of that come in your relationship with Dr. Mariver? Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, I think it comes Be in... Be able to have honest in, in trusting, conversations. Yes, and, yeah. in trusting your doctor and saying... And even, I think, I've, you know, I've met or talked to so many women who've said, like, yeah, I did say to my doctor, I'd like to go on vacation, but... And the doctor said, go, you know? Yeah. So some yeah. of it is you're trying to be a good patient. You don't want anything to, like, screw something mm -hmm. up, right? But there's there also is this, you know, balance of living your life and, and knowing, you know, how to get through those things. Yeah. So the next thing that I think is really, really challenging, especially early on, is that everything that comes up from a medical standpoint, the first thought is going to be, is this cancer? For like, example... Oh my gosh, everything Lots from uh, headaches to back pain to it, I, literally everything. Mm -hmm. Every ache and pain, every yes. bump or anything like yes. that, the first thought is... Is a cancer. Is a cancer. Yeah, and that has gotten better, but it's... But will never go away. It will never go away. No, that's not something that right. for you and for the people listening... And I'm sure they understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Is that'll never be zero. No. Even though 25 year, 24 years ago, it was a 
15 out of 10. Yeah. All right. And it was, oh, S-H-I-T. Yeah. Holy crap. And the world is melting. Yeah. Until we got into the office. Yeah. You know, now it, it's not as one. It's not, it's, it's still a eight. It, yeah. It depends you know, on what it is. Truth. Right. Yeah. It depends on what it is. I would say it's just not nearly as likely to happen or even like this time of year for me, I tend to get a lot of headaches. I know now that it's related to like the weather, the whatever, the mold, all that kind of stuff. It's uh, this is just a time of, and that took my PCP saying to me, um, you know, you've been in here like the last three years at this time of the year. You're like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. you know, let me just. Which is so understandable, though. I I totally get that part. Yeah, it's just human nature. Yeah. So the question is like, how do you balance that mm-hmm. also and figure out? You know, I one thing I had found that I started doing pretty early was like I if something felt off to me I would think about it a little bit and then I would tell you about it mm-hmm. and then I I just felt like so many times if I talked to you about it it would either dissipate you would have something that would be like nope that doesn't have you thought sense. of this yes you have know, you thought you of did that? this the other yes, day yeah. something like that um a lot of times just saying your fears out loud kind of helps them go away anyway yes um, letting somebody else know yeah <laughs> yep yeah. yeah. and then if it doesn't go away having somebody else to help you monitor it and then make an next plan with an appointment of some kind or or whatever the, that looks like was mm. you know has been really helpful and you certainly don't want to ignore those things no you know you, no. you shouldn't i i don't want to say you can't because you can right but you shouldn't i mean i that's that's part of the system is you identifying things early yeah or and knowing your can. body the and best you can yes. yeah so yeah. so that stuff is um it is a an ongoing challenge you know and mm-hmm. to to manage that kind of thing so right. um the other thing would be like for me is also now about managing side effects so you know when we started this and again things have changed it so much over the course of time and i just want to address this because i've gotten a couple of um dms lately about specific parts of my treatment if they're not doing my treatment in the united states anymore <laughs> there's a reason for that <laughs> mm-hmm. you know what i mean so yeah. i i know that p- that it's really easy to hook on to one thing and say well that's the thing that's going to do it and if you've got nothing else from this I hope you understand there wasn't one thing. Right. From from all of these, if you've right. listened all the way through to now, there, right. there has not been one Right. Thing. And I was having a conversation with somebody the other day about, like, if you could have been diagnosed now, like, mm-hmm. what would be the, the pros to that? And I'm like, let me tell you what the pros, there's mm-hmm. a lot of them, a lot yeah. of them. So, um, I guess with all of that, you know, like... Now, I manage side effects more than anything, Mm -hmm. you know, and that is from the drugs that I was on that at the time, we didn't care. We didn't care what's long-term. We'll take long-term side effects. What's long-term? We're not going to be here for a long time. Right. We didn't know if I had months even. So, we were like, long-term did not matter. Um, So, I guess all of with all of this, I think it, again, comes back to just recognizing that it's not going to be easy some days are going to be a lot more challenging than others Mm -hmm. um but um you are your biggest advocate in terms of knowing your body knowing how to respond you know and knowing how to put people around you that can help you you know respond to the challenges there's going to be challenges and some of it is just because metastatic cancer is scary we know it's scary and so You know, you're not going to be on top of it every day. Yeah, so support when you're going through any kind of crisis is so important, Mm -hmm. right? It just uh, makes everything a lot better. But the problem that happens, I feel like, with cancer is that a lot, it's finding the right support. So a lot of people will say, one, that they're going to help. Two, they'll say the wrong things completely. Like, there's a lot of kind of caveats, I feel like, that can kind of make um, you feeling like you have the right people around you um, Mm -hmm. really a lot better Um, in that I the reason I feel that support is so imperative especially in the beginning is that as somebody who has cancer I can't stress it enough that you need to take care of yourself right so you need the other things in life 
you need help with them, right? Especially as women. Well, that's the thing. You need to take care of yourself. And in order to do that. Yes. You need help. You need help. And you also need the people around you not to be asking for things from you. Or helping you in a way you don't want help with. Or helping yes. you in a way that's steering you down a road you don't yes. want with. Or yes. he- there's a million of these things that we could go through with. It's, it's what you need, one, yep. and want, two. But yeah. those, both of those things are very important in you thriving yeah. and uh, moving on to the next step. Because remember, we haven't even got to treat me yet when yeah. we're talking about this. It's just you, get, you were diagnosed yesterday. Yeah. Um, and treatment starts sometime in the future, hopefully near. Yeah, so what we realized quickly was how overwhelming it was, right? Just from, just on a very basic level, just to disseminate the news. Yeah. Just to get the news out there and to have people come, the reactions come back in was terrible both ways. I felt like it yeah. It, it was so painful. <laughs> Long time ago for us. Yeah. Uh, this was before internet, uh, before cell phones, before that. So I get it times different now. Yep. Um, but yeah. But there's also just such a, you know, there's such a drain on doing that. It's so hard. It's so hard as a patient to have to talk to a million people about the fact that you have cancer when you are terrified that you have cancer, right? And, and it's just... Yeah. All of those things. What we kind of realized quickly was like, I needed kind of a team of people around me. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, you know, you also can only, you just can only handle so much. We hope that you guys have uh, really appreciated this um, series. I hope that you got one thing out of it. Yep. Literally. I'm serious that that changes your direction. I hope any, and if you don't, have never had cancer and somehow you're listening to this or it's because <laughs> yeah. I hope you got one thing yeah. that that now you, you're going to do something different in a positive way yeah. my gosh this was worth it yeah so I think um just because of I know we've gotten some new listeners and uh we have I we're going to pivot here in the next little bit but I think next week um other, we'll do Monday Momentums, but next week we're going to do kind of a synopsis of the diagnosis and a compilation of a few things um, that we've done over the podcast. Because I know that some of you guys are jumping in now, which is great, but there's really some good stuff back at the beginning. So yeah. we'll look at kind of bringing some of that forward for you over the next week, possibly two, and then we'll jump into kind of that celebration of 25 years. So... Heather's also working on a, uh, a uh, what do you call it? A download? A download <laughs> that for those of you guys who want this in writing. <laughs> but Heather is it's working on it. Down- I'm putting it out there so you have to now. Okay. All right. All right. It's That's done. Also she, my... It's going to be a download that okay. people can get access to. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you being here and we, this has been really good for us to I've do. learned a lot. Yeah, I, I have. I agree. So, um, as always, you can get a hold of us, and we would love to hear what you would like to talk about specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, we would, if we get questions and answers, like a bunch of them, we could do some Q and A's. Mm-hmm. Um, we we're open to ideas, um, but we're just excited that you're here and keep going, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. We'll see you later. Yep.